Now tell you about a revolutionary breakthrough in battery technology. A new super material that could possibly replace lithium in batteries has been discovered. This new discovery may reshape the future of energy storage. Scientists working for Microsoft and the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory, part of the U.S. Department of Energy, have uncovered a new substance, N2116. A solid-state electrolyte, scientists successfully transformed this raw material into a functioning battery prototype. It has been used to power a light bulb, marking its first real-world application. What is the significance of this? You see, this material could cut down lithium usage in batteries by up to 70%. N2116 represents a more sustainable energy storage solution as compared to liquid or gel-like lithium. It could be used to make solid-state batteries and this, uh, would be, this, these would be safer and promise faster charging. They could soon offer greater energy density and thousands of charge cycles. The path to this discovery was nothing short of a technological feat. Using artificial intelligence and supercomputers, researchers screened through 32 million potential inorganic materials, narrowing them down to just 18 candidates in under a week. This Microsoft-developed AI is trained on molecular data to figure out chemistry without AI and supercomputers. This could have taken more than two decades of lab research. After AI narrowed down the candidates, battery experts selected the final substance for lab work. And the entire journey from the idea to a working battery prototype took less than nine months. Dr. Nuria Tapia Ruiz at Imperial College London sees such materials as the holy grail in the industry. But why is this discovery such a big breakthrough? Well, that has to do with the status of lithium. Lithium is a crucial element in rechargeable batteries. It is used in just about everything from electric vehicles to smartphones. The element is so precious that it's sometimes called white gold. But presently, the world is looking for a replacement for lithium. This race is fueled by growing environmental concerns and market demands. After all, there is a potential shortage looming as soon as 2025, according to the International Energy Agency. To make things worse, the U.S. Department for Energy has predicted that there will be a tenfold increase in demand by the year 2030. Not just that, lithium mining poses significant environmental challenges requiring immense water and energy resources. So as we step into an era where AI and supercomputing could redefine scientific research, we are witnessing a radical shift in how we approach battery technology as well. And with N2116, we may very well be looking at a sustainable, efficient future for energy storage. A feud is brewing between OpenAI and the New York Times. The publication has sued OpenAI and its partner, Microsoft Corp. For what exactly? Copyright infringement. New York Times has accused Chad GPT of outright copying its content. And what does its parent company, OpenAI, have to say? Here, take a look at what it posted on its blog page. Let me read it out for you. The New York Times lawsuit is without merit, quote unquote. You see, a war has broken out. It's a war of words. It's a war for authenticity. And here's what we know. On the 27th of December, New York Times filed a lawsuit against OpenAI and Microsoft in federal district court in Manhattan. What was the publication's complaint? That millions of its articles were allegedly being used to train ChatGPT and worse. They now compete with the news outlet as a source of reliable information. 
That was the complaint. And what does the New York Times want? It wants OpenAI and Microsoft to be held responsible. It is calling for the companies to destroy any chatbot models and training data that use copied material from the Times. Now, you may already know how these AI chatbots work. They are basically trained using large language models. They churn massively large data sets to understand and summarize and then create new content. And in the case of New York Times, the complaint is not merely that ChatGPT has allegedly used its content as an input, as something to learn from. It's bigger than that. New York Times says that in various instances, ChatGPT has word for word regurgitated Times content. Simply put, the problem isn't that it is training on the content, but that it is shamelessly copying it allegedly. And then there is the issue of paywalls as well. The Times and lawyers arguing that ChatGPT can be tricked into reciting the publication's content, that too with minimal prompts. And what is OpenAI doing to tackle this? It says the New York Times is not telling the full story. That the publication has mentioned seeing some regurgitation of its content, but refused to share any examples. OpenAI went so far as to claim that New York Times intentionally manipulated chat GPT to regurgitate its content. You see, strong allegations have been made. At the same time, OpenAI has admitted that content regurgitation is a rare bug in the system and it is working to fix it. The AI firm also claims that using data sets for training purposes is fair use. But that is not what content creators and publishers around the world think. They have been trying to limit the increasingly powerful large language models training on the work of human creators, or at least get some compensation out of it. Meanwhile, OpenAI is in talks with publishers for licensing content. For months, it has been trying to strike deals to feature publisher content, and reports say it recently signed a multi-year deal with Politico's parent company, it cost OpenAI tens of millions of dollars. The AI firm was also in talks with the New York Times. But as you can see, it did not go down that well. The lawsuit poses a major challenge to OpenAI. If the Times wins the case, OpenAI may not only owe billions of dollars, but could also be forced to destroy any of its training data sourced from the Times, which is a costly and complicated affair. We now get to the story of Gabriel Atal. You must have seen that name doing the rounds. He is the new Prime Minister of France, but that is just one part of the story. He is the country's youngest and first openly gay Prime Minister and has had a rather fascinating rise up the ranks. Our next report explores his journey. Gabriel Attal's journey started from a modest role in the health ministry. Now, at the age of 34, he is the Prime Minister of France. Early in President Macron's term, Attal emerged as a key advisor. Known for his articulate public speaking and quick thinking, he quickly gained notoriety as the word sniper for his exceptional communication skills. Born in a multicultural family, with his father being of Tunisian Jewish descent and his mother of Orthodox Christian origins from Odessa, Attal studied at the prestigious Ecole Alsacienne in Paris. He later excelled at Sciences Po University, earning a master's in public affairs. A turning point in his political career came in 2002, when he participated in a protest against far-right leader Jean-Marie Le Pen. Joining the Socialist Party in 2006, 
he actively supported Zigolène Royal in the 2007 presidential election. His political prowess was recognized early on by Marisol Touraine at the Health Ministry, who foresaw a promising future for him. In 2016, Attal made a strategic shift to Macron's centrist party. At 29, he emerged as the youngest member of a government under the Fifth Republic, taking on multiple influential roles, like Elrem head, government spokesperson, and public accounts minister. Over time, his political stance has transitioned from the center-left to a more center-right position. Reflecting a versatile political orientation, Macron relies on Attal's dynamic presence to connect with the younger electorate. Recent polls have shown a strong public approval of Attal as prime minister, indicating his high popularity among citizens. His path to the prestigious Hotel de Matignon is marked by his keen political instinct. Attal acknowledges the French president's role in his meteoric rise. From his days as a socialist town councillor to a leader in the centrist movement, Attal's career showcases his adaptability and drive. As education minister, he earned wide acclaim for his decisive approach to school reform and anti-bullying measures. His presence in Macron's administration stands out. 36% believe he will be a good prime minister, while 34% would choose to have a beer with him, earning him the adoration of many and making him one of the nation's most popular political figures.